On this episode of Law Weekly, a conversation on the proceedings of the election petition tribunal, the legality of the continued detention of the suspended EFCC chairman, and much more. We have the views of a senior legal practitioner, Kayode Adjulo OON. Also showing on the program highlights from the opening ceremony of the 2023 Law Week of the Lagos branch of the Nigerian Bar Association. So our weekly recap of the top trending legal stories from the courtrooms. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Shola Shiali. As usual, we begin with the hearing of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Abuja. I started by asking senior legal practitioner Kayode Ajulo his impression of the proceedings so far. My impression of the proceedings so far is, you know, I need to commend everybody. Both the jurists, that's the judges, and the practitioner, the lawyers, and let me put it this way, the parties, at least you see them every day. They've conducted themselves and they've shown that they are serious. And I think if one must comment, let us start with the ju judges. They've made some rulings, which I'm yet to see anybody to force it. Despite the fact that some may not have the popular acclamation, but it is founded with the good reason of law. And that is why you can notice nobody has been able to say, look, I'm appealing this ruling. To that, I think there is hope, there is belief, and there is confidence in their numbers. I'm, I'm not surprised because I do say some, some months back that going through the list of the law justices on that panel, it is, I think, I believe they are one of the best in Nigeria. And I know they will do justice without fear and all favor. And I want to believe that this is one of the essence of justice, that there are, you don't need to take recourse to the street, you don't need to fight. Justice, it will be there and the just will be done. And you can see, sometimes some of those, all the, all, all the documents, some are accepted, some are rejected. But you can see one single thing that everybody, they've been ventilating their grievances, and I think that is good for democracy. Some lawyers have said that there is a need to look at the process of the election petition again and improve on it such that the process is concluded before uh, those who win are sworn in. What do you think we can do to improve the system and speed up the process? Oh, well, thank you very much. The idea is laudable, and it's something that we should be wish we should wish for. But there's a difference between wishful thinking and reality. Reality of the matter is that we shouldn't forget that this election petition, election petition is governed not apart from the electoral law by the constitution, and this is the constitution that fixed the time within the time frame of having the election, pre-election matter, and the re-election and the election. In a situation where election will take place about three to two months before the inauguration, then the question is that how possible? And don't forget that after election, you have almost almost 30 days within which you can bring your petition. That means that another 30 days is over. That means that we're having about three months, two months. Now, let me ask you, how will it be possible for you to, we are talking of 36 states, taking witnesses. Let me give an example. PDP and Atiku Abaka has mentioned that they're going to use within the 50 to 100, 100 witnesses. How will you, how will this witness, when now, how many days do you think will be Let's even assume that you press, compress the witnesses, three witnesses in a day, and don't forget that they will be cross-examined. The cross-examination may take a day or two, and then they will find that it will be strange. And that is why we have the fact that when you are going to the, uh, the court tribunal, it takes some number of days and the number of days. So I think the best way to do this is anybody calling for that should first call for review of electoral law and the constitution. So that those time frame of when we have the country, of course, we can say that we have election a year or six months before the inauguration. Though we can know that that six months is what we're going to do. But for anybody to just wake up and maybe, I may not know, but I think we have to face the reality. We have to face the reality. As part of the um, solution, some of your colleagues have also suggested that INEC should not be a party to an election petition that they should only come to court and tender documents and appear as witnesses because we've heard some of the petitioners complain that they are finding it difficult to assess documents from INEC and that sometimes INEC has even come to court to 
challenge the authenticity of some of the documents that they receive from INEC. So do you agree with the suggestion that INEC should not be a party to an election petition? It's unlaughable because, and I believe, I think I need to tell our colleague that we should reason like a lawyer. Don't forget that INEC did not, never find themselves in that court, but because some people make them a party. You can't slap me and you expect me to be quiet. You drag her neck to court and you say her neck should not. You dra it's like dragging you to a battle. And you slap me, I should not retaliate or I should not make a response. And apart from that, let's be sincere. INEC, yes, is independent, but don't forget that INEC is one of the agency of government and INEC is, is subject to court jurisdiction. The court can so order. And again, don't forget that the essence of this election, who conducted the election is INEC. And by petitioning, you are querying you are challenging the decision of election for returning a candidate. And INEC decision, when you challenge it, INEC as an agency of government, as an electoral body, holds to defend what they've already, their decision, whether rightly or wrongly. And don't forget, in the Ocean State, in Adeleke and uh, Oyetola, INEC not only defended the matter, when the, 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 when the judgment, went for uh, Oyetola. INEC appeal to say we stand by our decision by returning Adeleke. They, are, they challenged it and at the end of the day, they won. Nobody complained. Now, everybody's saying that. So I think, I think we need to really get this right. And I want to believe that maybe they were just saying that because that's another politics and I don't think any lawyer should be saying that. Maybe they, are, maybe they just want to you know, make some people happy. Since he came into office, President Tinubu has uh, taken some far-reaching and some controversial decisions, as some people have called it. But how do you react to his actions uh, so far? Well, let me quickly say that I'm, I'm, though I won't say I'm one of his fans, I must be sincere, but so far, day in, day out, daily, uh, weekly, uh, should I put it, how I least, per seconds, per minute, he has been he has been hitting the ground running as he mentioned. Either way, we shouldn't we should expect we should expect something less than that. Particularly somebody who has really been clamoring for this for for so long, and I think this is what it is. But we know how it is. The optics you need at least when you are taking charge, they need to know that you are in charge. My worry is that I believe this thing will continue. This honeymoon should not stop. I think that's best. As as, as of now, we are an honeymoon, and. This is what is expected when you're not even. The question now we should be thinking is how long can you maintain the course? And I must be sincere, he has done so well. From the first day, you can see that government is working. Whether the government is working or not, but you can see that you can see semblance of government to governance in Nigeria, and that one I, I give him kudo. My only worry here is having sought for and being obtained 20 of the house of, of the our special advisors, my thinking that at least the first or second advisor you are going to appoint, at least you appoint one to look at the issue of law, rule of law, constitutionalism, and all that. And for you to have appointed almost six to eight to 10, 11, 12, I'm here to see one that will say, I have swear an oath to be responsible to the way and manner we advise the president commander in chief when it comes to issue of rule of law, constitutionalism, and all that, then I think I'm worried. That is the only thing. Apart from that, let's give kudos to him. He has been, it is more or less like he's listening to the yearning and aspiration of the people. And I think I give him kudos. Save that. President Tinubu suspended the governor of the Central Bank, Godwin Emefele, and also suspended the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. How are you reading those actions? Well, it's expected. I think except we want to deceive ourselves. What happened with the Central Bank? I believe I'm even worried why has not even resigned from the point at the point that they are in court that your action your your thoughtless action to have even gotten to a, play, a point where some chief executive officer of the state we drag you to court you waited you allowed the whole thing you the, the whole government to go on to the point where the supreme court pass a verdict on your conduct and to tell you that you are wrong. I think you need to even read the judgment. I read it and I shook my head for Central Bank. It is, it is, it is a, a clear vote of no confidence on that institution called Central Bank and who is heading it as governor of Central Bank. Despite that, like typical Nigerian, you still sat there waiting 
for until where you are suspended. I think the suspension is long overdue. I think that's what it is. Though I will have comment about he's still being in detention, but I realize that the matter is in court now. He has gone to court and the court has pronounced on it. So I'm not going to say anything about that. And on the power too, I believe there have been a lot of infractions, which we only we have to see the way it is. But I still believe it's an accusation, it's an allegation, it's presumption of innocence is there. And that is my only worry here is that he has been in that detention for some time. I think he, he the right thing needs to be done. He holds, particularly when they've not even gone to court. Court should be allowed within 24 hours, should be allowed to decide his fate, not that he should be kept in perpetuity and in detention. I think this is not the way. And my worry is this, and that's why maybe I will use this opportunity to call on the president. I think he need to rein in on the Department of State Security to call them to order. This is not the way. We are talking of democracy and for someone that I believe he, democracy is not alien to him. And one of the things we know is signature all his life for the past 30 years, I think I've been following him, is mounting, talking, advocating, promoting democracy. And now you are sitting as a commander in chief and some agency of government keeping someone perpetually in, 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 in detention. No, it's, it won't be acceptable. And I think I need to repeat it. The, the uh, Department of State Security need to do the needful, need to what, whatever may be their operation, whatever may be their conduct, must be in tandem with the rule of law. They can't just keep anybody in detention and say, no, we are investigating. For how long? I think that, I think that should be enough, please. Let's round off talking about judicial reforms. What are those reforms that you think that this new administration should put priority on? Because nowadays, when people here go to court, they think it's because the judiciary has been pocketed and people are not likely to get justice from there. So what can the new administration do to give confidence in the judiciary and such that Nigerians can have the kind of judiciary that we'll be proud of? I think the best way to do that is, is to place high premium on any issue of rule of law. An issue about, as of today, there are some judges that need to be appointed. Today, in some courts, your matter will go on for thy kingdom come. And that's where anybody can say, go to court. Go to go to court. The essence of it, because we know that none, not that, not that the issue itself is not that the judges will compromise. The process will take a long time. What any given government can do, like, for example, President Tinobu administration, what they can do, is just to ensure that they play high premium on issue of justice, of rule of law and judiciary. And it's very easy to do that. It is very easy to do that. And it's for them to do for them to do that. Today, today, federal court, they are in need of justices. I think it is to hasten it. Even in Supreme Court, the number of the justices in Supreme Court, I think they are within maybe 13 or 14. Whereas the constitution talks a minimum of 21. So where are the rest? And there are a lot of people ready to take over this, this, this office. Good thing, they good, good enough. I think last week, there is an advertis advertisement that they, they wanted. But I think quickly, we need to do that. Let our judiciary be other people and doing. And maybe the, the salary, unfortunately, you won't believe it. I learned that about 2007. That was the last time their salary review. And meanwhile, you can know 2007, and I, our dollar is about one one twenty, but now today dollar is about seven hundred and fifty. Calculate that. And somebody the last time they reviewed it said, "How did you want them to survive?" Sometimes I do ask all these questions. These are the little, little, little things, and I believe, and it's for our lawyers to to put to put high premium on that justice delivery system. Everything will be okay. Everything will be well. And again, when we talk of this issue of go to court, it's not about even about litigants alone. It's about how to revive our economy. I'm a lawyer. I'm an arbitrator. Most of my clients abroad, sometimes they want to come to Nigeria. The first question they will ask you is to ask you, how is your justice administration? Their fear is that if I put money here and I want, I want justice, how soon can I get the justice? You know, these are the little, 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 little things. A lot of, there are a lot of people that want to move to Nigeria. Like we have a very big market. They want to come, they want to move their capital, they want to move their resources. But when they think, what is happening to their judiciary? Can I have justice? If A should collect my money, can I quickly go to, to, to the court and obtain justice? These are the things. And so anytime 
Like I was listening to what the president Butinobu mentioned in 2004 when he was when he was addressing for some some one of his clubs saying that you can't be jocketing, talking to one president, you can't be jocketing around the whole world, calling for investor and the one thinking that your judiciary is is nothing to write, is nothing to write home about it. How do you want them to bring their money? And that is why. So whenever we talk of independence of judiciary, where we talk about fair and effective administration of justice, it is not about those who are in prison or for somebody whose rights have been violated. It's capital to come to Nigeria for market, for economy to grow. Because justice, effective justice administration is one of the things that bring economy to grow. Welcome back. The Lagos branch of the Nigerian Bar Association has held its 2023 Law Week with a theme, Facing the Future, Law in a Globalized Economy. We have some of the highlights from that opening plenary up next. As newly elected leaders settled into the business of governance, the plenary session of the Law Week of the, of the Premier Branch offer a distinct opportunity for the legal profession to take its rightful place in the interrogation of these all important issues and um, proper practical solutions, not just for governments at all levels, but all other stakeholders in the Nigerian nation. With those remarks, the chairman of the Law Week Planning Committee kick-started proceedings at the opening plenary of the Law Week. It's a hybrid session which attracted participants in person and online. The physical venue, the Nigerian Law School, played host to members of the bench, the bar, and other professionals who have come as guests to the event. Participants discussed the issues of globalization and how the judiciary can face the future. I, I, I think what, what we're looking at is we're looking at the ideals and looking at how we can work towards them. And it's very, very good for us to identify the challenges that we could have on the way. One basic challenge is infrastructure. One other challenge is, of course, knowledge. One other challenge is the reluctance of lawyers to accept change. Lawyers are very, 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 very slow in accepting change. We see the court as a place and not as a service. The court is a service, not a place. So you don't have to cut the term to come to court too, for I court it for your cases to be heard. You don't need to go and file cases in federal court and and challenge the issues of the perimeter for your cases to go on. Um, so clearly, our current mode is not sustainable. In my own docket, I have about 880 cases, and I have the least number of cases. I have for it to have 1,500 cases, and, I, and the cases <laughs> take, keep coming. And I just wonder, when I'm assigning the case, I say, ha, ah, how will justice allow like to do this work? Anyway, when we give him the work, we will do it. So the present model is definitely, definitely, definitely very, very deficient. Yes. I agree. Dispute resolution by way of litigation in Nigeria is, 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 is it's getting out of hand. The slow pace at which the wheels of justice turn, it has become scandalous. And we don't even want to reel out the statistics. If we look at high profile cases, just Google it. You look at uh, the corruption index that they have a database. High profile, Corrupt take three thousand days of, uh, in courts before that for our courts to even give a judgment. Meanwhile, they would have gone up and down, up and down the appeal system, fighting for one thing or the other before they come back and take their trial. This is very scandalous. I will not accept that the fault is the bench. The fault is with you guys, is with the bar, because you are the ones who challenge everything. The bar or the bench? The debate over delay isn't going away anytime soon, but participants also proffer solutions for facing the future. I do not think that the unacceptable delay in administration of justice in Nigeria is caused by only lawyers. It's caused majorly by judges and the courts. <laughs> <laughs> now, and uh, I'm very sorry about this. You know, it, it, because we are, we are here to offer a solution to a very serious problem. So one of the problems, in fact, I, 
might give 60% of the problems, the cost of the problems to the judiciary in Nigeria. Now, uh, my lords have spoken eloquently and of course have educated us on uh, the way out of these problems. But I would like to suggest to my lords, since they are here, that there is need for them to do a kind of soul searching. The NBA and the regulatory authorities in the legal profession will need to take this matter head on. Since it is clear, because in other jurisdictions, this is as spearheaded by judges. In fact, in Malaysia, it was the chief judge of Malaysia that spearheaded the reforms that made it impossible for any case in Malaysia now to spend two years in court. And when I say two years, I mean from the court of first instance to the last court of the land. The other option is that, which I think can also work hand in hand with the um, time limit, is that we should limit the levels of court that get involved in the enforcement of arbitral award issues. I do not see why issue of enforcement of arbitral awards will go all the way to the Supreme Court. At the end of the session, participants agreed that change is inevitable and lawyers need to scale up to be a part of the looming brave future of legal practice. And just before we go, let's quickly do a recap of some of the top trending stories from the courtrooms. We begin with the report that the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal has admitted certified copies of academic and work records of President Bola Tinubu tendered by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate Atiku Abubakar. The documents include a BSc certificate from the Chicago State University, NYSC Discharge Certificate and Mobile Nigeria Oil PLC Certificate of Service. The PDP had brought the documents through their subpoenaed witness, Mike Enahoro Eba, who is a private legal practitioner. He notes that the documents were purportedly obtained by President Tinubu, but bore the name Bola Adekule Tinubu. Led in evidence by the lead counsel to the PDP, Chris Uche, the witness also tendered forms EC13 and EC9 nomination forms and the letters written to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, as attachments. Counsel to INEC, Tinubu and APC all objected to the admissibility of the documents. While answering questions on the cross-examination from counsel to Tinubu, senior advocate of Nigeria, Wale Alanik Bekun, the witness, Mike Enahura Eba, says he is not the official custodian of the certificate from the Chicago State University. Chief Alanik Bekun has however tendered a letter from the school stating that Tinubu graduated with honours. Despite the objections of counsel to the PDP, Chris Uche, the tribunal admitted the letter in evidence as an exhibit before the court. After this, the PDP formally applied to close its case. In all, it called 27 witnesses. The tribunal has adjourned to July 3rd for the respondents to open their defence. Still in Abuja, the Court of Appeal has reinstated the former Director General, National Intelligence Agency, Mohamed Dauda. Delivering judgment, Justice Peter Ige says the evidence leading to the dismissal of Dauda was frivolous and lacking in merit. The judge also resolved all the contentious issues against the NIA in favor of Dauda, who is a respondent in the suit. He further ordered that his salaries and entitlements since the day of dismissal from office be paid. The appellate court also gave an order that the sum of one million naira be paid to Dauda. Justice Ige further held that Dauda should be allowed to retire in service in accordance with the stipulated laws. And we round off with a report that the Lagos State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has heard that the Deputy Governor Obafemi Hamzat was not qualified to stand election because he had earlier renounced his loyalty to Nigeria. The revelation was made by U.S. immigration lawyer Mrs. Ulubusayo Fashidi, who testified as an expert witness in the petition filed by Badabo Rhodes Viva, the Labour Party's candidate in the March 18 governorship election, seeking to nullify the return of Governor Babajide Sanwalu and his deputy. The expert witness, who was subpoenaed by the Labour Party, was led in evidence by the party's lead counsel, senior advocate of Nigeria, Dr. Ulumide Ayeni. While answering questions put to her, she told the tribunal that Abafemi Hamzat in the INEC form EC9 he filled when applying as a running mate to the governor had admitted that they applied for naturalization. When Dr. Ayeni moved to tender a blank sample of a downloaded form and section 337 of 8 CFR to the three-man tribunal, counsel to all the respondents objected, saying that the reason for their objection would be included in their final written addresses.
And that's the program for today. If you missed any part of it, you can find it on past episodes on our YouTube channel. Do also give us feedback via any of our social media platforms. I'm Shola Shirley. Thank you for watching and see you next week.